I'm going to be performing a buccal mucosal bleeding time test. So to do this test, I'm going to be using this bleeding time blotting paper. I will also be using a 15 blade. Also these lip clamps, or you can use some gauze if these aren't available, and then also a timer. So this patient is sedated. I'm going to take these lip clamps and pull back her lip to expose her mucosa. I'm going to get my stopwatch ready. So I'm going to take my 15 blade and make a small one millimeter incision right here on the mucosa. So once I have made my incision, I'm going to start the timer. I'm going to blot away the excess blood every five seconds until the bleeding has stopped. I'm going to be careful not to actually touch the incision, but just the excess blood that's flowing downward. So this patient's bleeding time is a minute and 32 seconds, which is perfect. So a normal bleeding time is between one and five minutes. I'm going to be drawing a CBC and doing a chemistry on this guy. So first we're going to get his sample from his jugular vein. So when making a blood smear, all you need are just two microscope slides. I'm gonna take my sample and get a small drop of blood. I'm gonna place a small drop of blood on the slide. I'll place the slide at a 30 degree angle, pull back, and then push until it distributes across the slide. And this is what the sample should look like if you did it correctly. The edges are smooth and feathered and not ripped. And then once the sample has completely dried, I am going to stain it. I'm gonna be using plasma for my serological testing, and this is gonna spin in our centrifuge for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna take the slide and I'm going to stain it in the fixer for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and 40 seconds. So once my smear has dried, I'm just gonna look at it underneath the microscope. So when looking at a blood smear, you are gonna look at it under oil immersion. So I'm gonna place a drop of oil on my slide. So just from the distribution, of these red blood cells. This patient is anemic. She also has a normal platelet count. I don't see any neutrophils either, so I would say that her neutrophil count is low. So my serological testing, I'm going to be doing a Chem 10, and what we run in our Chem 10s is albumin, ALKP, ALT, buin, creatinine, glucose, and total protein. This is our chemistry machine. I'm just gonna pull out the drawer, take my sample and my sample cup, and I'm going to pipette the recommended amount of plasma into the cup. Once I've done that, I'm gonna place the cup into the machine, take the Chem 10 and open it up. Then I just take the slides, place them into the machine, shut the door, and then just press the button. So once I've gotten my blood sample, I'm gonna take my heartworm test. And this is what the test looks like. So the heartworm test comes with a conjugate and I'm gonna do four drops of this conjugate. One, two, three, four. And then take three drops of my sample. And then I just invert the sample a couple of times to mix it thoroughly. I'm gonna take my sample and put it right here in this hub. And it usually takes 30 to 60 seconds for the sample to travel down before it is snapped. Once the sample reaches this circle, I'm going to snap the test. I'm gonna let this sit for eight minutes and we'll come back and read the results. I'm gonna be performing a rapid vet auto agglutination card. This is for blood typing. I'm gonna be blood typing a dog today to see if he is DEA positive or negative. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is write the dog's name and the date up at the top of the card. So the patient that we're gonna be testing today is Katie and I did pull her blood in an EDTA tube. So in this rapid vet kit, it does come with a dilutant. So we're gonna use this dilutant. So I'm gonna place one drop of the dilutant in the auto agglutination saline screen. And then I'm gonna place one drop of the patient sample in the same autoagglutination saline screen. And then I'm gonna take a wooden stir and then just mix it for about 10 seconds. So this is what the card should look like once you've done the first step. I don't see any signs of agglutination on this, so it's okay to proceed to the next two tests. So I'm gonna do the same thing by putting one drop of dilution in both wells. I'm gonna mix it for about 10 seconds. Then I'm gonna get another drop of the sample and put it into the patient test. Once again, I'm gonna stir for 10 seconds. I'm just gonna rock the test to make sure that everything is mixed together. If the card shows visible agglutination in the well-marked patient test, that means that the patient is DEA1 positive. So since I don't see any agglutination in this bottom patient test, that means that this patient is DEA negative. I'm gonna be demonstrating how to do a packed cell volume and a total protein. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my CBC. So I'm going to take my sample and I'm going to tilt it and then put my hematocrit tube in until I see the sample. And once I can see the sample, I'm going to put my finger 
over it and take it out. And then I'm going to take the clay and put the sample into it to form a cap down at the bottom. I'm going to do it one more time to balance out the centrifuge. Place my hematocrit tubes with the clay at the bottom. Close the lid and I'm going to set it and let it spin for three minutes. Once my sample is spun, this is what it will look like. And then I'm going to take this card, which is a hematocrit tube reader, and I'm going to start with the clay at the zero. I'm going to follow it over and it's just below the 50, so I'm going to say that's at 48%. To do my total protein, I'm going to take my hematocrit tube and break it in half. And then I'm going to hold it up to the light and read the sample. And it looks like it is a total protein of 6. 